This is what winter training looks like. Okay. My friend Tanner. Hello. We grew up swimming together. And he won't hang out with me because he's too busy training. But Tanner's time. gonna do a triathlon too. Yeah. He just announced it, it this morning. We'll create our own triathlon. I suppose I should uh, make sure Jenna doesn't take a thousand years to get ready. Jenna. Yeah. My fingers are cold. How'd your swim feel? It's awful. Awful? Terrible. I thought you said it felt pretty good. That was what you said oh. about your swim. Oh. Okay. It felt well, all stiff. My swim felt surprisingly okay. You know when you don't swim for a while and then you try to go fast in the water and your arms just cannot move fast? That's been happening to me all week. Day, I was actually able to go like some 29s on those 50s. You know why? And like 105. You were going fast? Because I had a draft. You had the draft train. Yeah, but of four still. People. I was fast on my own accord. Thank you very much. Okay. My, my hips tend to get misaligned. I usually go to PT to like get them realigned and fix it. I think I waited a little too long. Then I competed in a half Ironman. Obviously I'm here now and I'm like having a little bit of pain uh, at the top of my hip, like pain and tightness right at the top of my hip. And it refers a little bit down to like the top of my knee. There were a couple times when I was running, I think after my race that I took three steps and I was like, I can't do anymore. We tend to see that with hip impingement. It's a classic, classic sign of hip impingement. But your your hip motion's normal. That bothers you a little bit at the yeah. time, doesn't it? Okay. So here's what I'd say is that you need to get the full x-ray series, which is uh, five x-rays of your pelvis, and we're going to get an MRI of your right hip. And that's going to tell you what's going on. It could be that you need an injection, like a little cortisone or PRP or something in there. Mm -hmm. It could be that you need a surgery to fix the underlying problem. Mm -hmm. We're going to know more from the x-ray and the MRI. There you go. Uh, Can you tell me what's going on? I don't know what's going on. Nobody knows what's well, going on. What did on. they say? He uh, prescribed me some x-rays and MRIs so that he can figure out what's going on. But yeah, that's it. That's the update. So we'll see what happens. <sighs> okay. 
So, hi, Jenna. I have chamois butter all over my hands. Okay, let's start again. Oh. Today, we, we both have a bike workout plan. Jenna just finished hers, and now she's working. Now it's my turn. I'm gonna hop on the bike. I've hit training pretty hard in the off season so far. Took some time off to go to San Diego, but besides that, there's really been no real interruption. My feet, thank you everyone that has asked about my feet this past year. My feet are, <laughs> my feet are 100%. They're not hurting. Yay! <laughs> now that my feet are recovered and healthy, it's time to get Jenna um, recovered and healthy as well. So today we are getting after it with some 30 minutes of sweet spot total, three times 10 and then four times one minute at zone five. Now I'm just kind of rolling out and getting warmed up, making sure my legs are gonna work. About 40 seconds until we start our intervals. Apologies for the mess. Jenna's in a meeting, but that workout's done, and now I'm gonna do 45 minutes easy off the bike. Usually don't force myself to do bricks, but um, out of convenience, it's kind of nice just getting it done early. So I know I was talking about running off the bike once I walked out here, literally changed in my running clothes, saw Jenna with her feet up on the couch. In the same spot that you left her. So. I decided to not run right now. I'm gonna run later. Got some nice leftovers waiting for me, so. If you need me, I'll be on the couch eating pasta. I feel like when I edit this video, it's just gonna be like, training, Jenna goes to doctor, training, <laughs> Jenna goes gets her x-rays, training, MRI. Yeah, that's exactly what it will be. <laughs> Back to the doctor. We got the goods now, too. 
You got your CD ROM. The hips here. Mm -hmm. Do you see how it kind of goes out and there's a little point right there? We tend to think of that as impingement, which is what we thought you had in your hip. Mm -hmm. Now we look at the space, there's the round thing there. I would say the socket is a little shallower than is typical, some degree of dysplasia. For, for both sides? For both, actually probably more on the left. Also looking here, do you see how there's a little extra white mm -hmm. right there? Mm -hmm. We call that sclerosis. So sclerosis is where the bone turns harder, where it may be seeing more stress mm -hmm. or edge loading. You see this so frequently in athletes that it's almost like you see it in all of them, <laughs> right? And then we look back at your other x-rays of your pelvis. This arc extends a little further and maybe there's some overhang. Again, so you have a combined type of impingement. I would guess maybe you have a labral tear on that right side that's okay. causing a lot of your symptoms. On the left side, there's this little, see that little calcification there? Yeah, what's that? Huh? That could be a secondary sign of a torn labrum where you have a little tear, a little blood, and a little calcium forms. On the left side? On the left. Oh. It's not surprising to see this on both sides. Mm -hmm. Also, you can have a labral tear and have no symptoms. What we do know is that the right one's symptomatic, so we should image the right one. Mm -hmm. Based so, on what that looks uh -huh. like, yes. what would be next steps? So let's see what it looks like. If you have a big labral tear, given what you do and what you want to do, you might be able to get away without surgery. It would be reasonable if you saw the right findings on MRI to repair this arthroscopically, just smooth off the bump on both sides and then if the ligament's torn, you repair that. A lot of athletes have had that, and a lot of them come back to sport, not all of them. Running is a tougher thing to get back to for everybody with any kind of joint surface problem. Now, especially if you get there before there's any arthritis. If you fix the problem, no arthritis, that seems to be a really high likelihood of getting back to all sports, because mm -hmm. you've truly really fixed the problem. If there's a loss of cartilage in there, that, that's not really truly reversible. You can make it better with a microfracture, but it's never, Kept going. Right. So, okay. There you have it. But we'll see again. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, so we'll see after that. Sounds good. Thank you. Yep, Thanks, take care. <laughs> Let's get some imaging done. Yeah. Let's not jump uh, to any severe conclusions. Yeah.